So the context of the disease is important when talking about treatment uh, of sickle cell anemia. So what we have basically are red blood cells that when they're deoxygenated, um, they form a sickle shape. All right. And what that does is makes make them uh, particularly vulnerable to hemolysis, which can lead to anemia. Um, and it also predisposes them to occlusion, occlusion of blood vessels, which can cause painful vasoclusive crises and also splenic dysfunction. All right, so uh, how, do we, um, how do we manage some of these manifestations? Um, so I like to talk about treatment in terms of two things. One, in terms of prevention or prophylaxis. And two, if we can't prevent the, uh, the uh, disease process, how do we intervene? So prophylaxis and intervention. And intervention can either be acute or chronic. All right. So let's start with this very first step, uh, the sickling. All right. How do we prevent patients from experiencing some of the symptoms as a result of this cycle? Well, we can make sure that our patients are well hydrated, um, that they avoid things like um, high altitudes, which can lead to hypoxia. And if there are infections, we got to make sure that those infections are treated promptly. Because if they're not, that can, um, that can lead to acidosis. All right. Another thing that can be done to prevent uh, this, this cycle here is the administration of what's called hydroxyurea. And what hydroxyurea does is it increases the level of hemoglobin F, hemoglobin type F that we talked about in the previous video. And what this form of hemoglobin does in turn is it prevents sickling. All right. So that's another way to prevent the manifestation of the disease. All right, uh, but how do we intervene once we do have uh, some of these manifestations? For example, what do we do when we have hemolysis? Well, we know that hemolysis is destruction of red blood cells. And if we're constantly destroying red blood cells, that means we have to constantly produce new red blood cells. And one of the molecules that's need it for the production of new blood cells is folic acid. So these patients need folic acid supplements. And so this is uh, the chronic intervention uh, that's needed. All right. How about some of these acute interventions? So the second part, uh, in addition to hemolysis, is, is occlusion. All right. So we have these painful vasoclusive crises. And uh, the way those are managed acutely is primarily through morphine, which is for pain control, um, hydration, and supplemental oxygen. All right, so that's the first line. However, if the patient is uh, does not respond to these initial measures, a more drastic approach is needed. So blood transfusion is done only as a, as a last resort. So for instance, if a patient com comes in with acute chest syndrome uh, or a stroke or priapism, and if the patient does not respond to these initial measures right here, then a blood transfusion can be considered. All right. Um, the other uh, aspect of this disease process right here is splenic dysfunction. So if we're occluding the circulation uh, to the spleen, then the spleen is infarcted, and the spleen is instrumental in fighting off some of these bacteria. These are what are called encapsulated bacteria. So uh, if the spleen is dysfunctional, uh, the patient is, an, is an, at an increased susceptibility uh, to being infected by these bacteria. So they require early vaccinations against these bacteria. Okay, and this is again prophylaxis. Um, in addition to that, some patients require 
prophylactic antibiotics, specifically penicillin. All right, and this is usually started at four months of age, uh, and it's given up until uh, a child is about six years old. All right, and this again is because the patients are at an increased risk for infection by these bacteria, which are no longer uh, able to be taken care of by the spleen. All right. Um, and so this is how you manage the disease. Uh, finally, in terms of cure, um, there are a couple of things that are on the horizon. One is gene therapy. And the other is bone marrow transplants. All right, and this is more of a, the curative aspect of management. Um, everything else is just dealing with the, with the situation at hand, uh, either in, in an acute setting, uh, chronic setting, or preventing the disease process.